Saints Row 5 is coming out, or not Saints Row 5, or maybe just another Saints Row game in general. So, Saints Row 5 got announced a while back, and people played the demo. And I've been hearing a bunch of good things about it, but... So, last year, they said that Saints Row 5 is in deep development, and that made a confirmation that Saints Row 5 is coming out. And tomorrow, we're finally going to see the reveal of the Saints Row reboot. Oh. Wait a minute, is this Saints Row? What the fuck? And we are finally here. Saints Row 2022 has finally been released. And there's been a lot of things happening with the title where a bunch of people criticizing. Since the premiere of the trailer, a lot of bad things I've been hearing about the game. And a lot of people that has been getting earlier releases and early reviews in the game have been giving it negative reviews. It was very concerning, do not get me wrong. All those reviews and rumors and whatever all getting in my head and made me concerned about the game itself. But forget all that. I finally finished the game and thank you all for coming to the stream. And I'm going to give you my review on Saints Row. So sit back and relax and let's get this shit started. So it's been about seven years since we even touched the Saints Row franchise. And that's mostly because after the guy out of hell, Volition wanted to do some sort of spiritual successor slash they want to make a whole new game altogether. So they made Ages of Mayhem. It was very different from the Saints Row franchise, even though the marketing kept saying this is not a Saints Row game. Everything in the game that people were already hyped about was related to Saints Row, from bringing back Johnny Gant and a bunch of Saints all together to referencing the Street Gang and even being part of a universe that takes place on one of the endings of Guy to Hell. So even though they claim this is not a Saints Row game, they did a horrible job of stating that. But in 2017, that game performed horribly due to the fact that it had horrible marketing and didn't really have a large player base at launch. And because of that, a lot of Volition employees got fired. So the new employees, plus the return of Jim Boone who left Volition, all knew that they need to make another Saints Row title. So Volition released the trailer and after so long and people were very angry, saying stuff like the characters look like generic high school hipsters and anything afterwards when they finally released gameplay to the public, a lot of people were not happy about it from too stiff gameplay to bad character dialogue to this isn't Saints Row 2 and I want to remaster instead. And I'm fully aware Volition knew about this but they didn't really do anything about it. So the game finally got released and there's been a lot of negative press about it, but I want to give you my opinion about how I actually feel about the game. Let's start off with something simple, which is the gameplay. So the gameplay is very similar to how it worked in Saints Row the Third and Saints Row 4. But the good thing about it is that you can actually alter a lot of the gameplay mechanics in the option setting. So it doesn't have to feel that clunky and it's actually very fun and entertaining and I find it kind of addicting. They brought back and changed a little with the takedown mechanics. Previously, the takedown mechanics usually happens when you sprint and attack. Well, this one, you actually have a little bar in the middle of the screen that tells you when's the perfect time to do a takedown attack. And every time, it will be an instant kill. What also returned was the hub, and the hub is very similar to the previous one before. Obviously, it looks different, but you already know what I mean. But they did add the character customization in the hub phone instead of going to a crib to change your outfit or going to image as design to change the character's physical appearance. Which is kind of a bummer because I actually really miss going to image as design to change my character's appearance. I never changed my character's appearance through my playthrough, but I would really like to have that option instead of just, oh, let me go through my phone and change the character, you know? Plus, I also miss going back to the crib to change my outfit. Another thing they introduced was the wingsuit, which replaces the parachute, and I really love the wingsuit. I love flying around town just by jumping off the helicopter and just gliding to my location, if you're high enough, of course. But it's very fun, and it's actually very easy to use once you get the hang of it, because I won't be surprised if sometimes people crash on the floor and die. Plus, it's very fun to land on cars or hit enemies with the wingsuit, so that's a plus for me. But speaking of cars, cars are very interesting in this game because the cars are very easy to drive, do not get me wrong, but the drifting is very ridiculous. You can do a whole 180 in literally two seconds, so it's kind of weird, but it's kind of fun when you know what to do because there's chances where you could go off the bridge when you do a drift really quickly. Plus, they added two new features in this franchise, which is very interesting. One is that you could actually shoot on top of the roof of your car while someone else is driving while you're killing enemies to get like a better aim. There's also vehicle combat, which is very fun also, which is basically you click the right mouse button and you intentionally hit cars that's in the left or right of you to get them out of the way. 
overall, I am enjoying the gameplay, even though there is a lot of bums that I will talk about later on in this video. Overall, it's pretty fun, especially the way they did side content, which is very interesting because in previous Saints Row game, activities were a big part of the game. And it kind of is here too, where they added this new feature called Criminal Ventures, which you basically build a bunch of buildings around the city and then you do activities for those specific buildings. For example, when you build a hospital, it makes you do insurance fraud for its ventures. And it's very similar to every other building that you build in the game. Just like previous Saints Row titles, doing these ventures are mandatory because some of them you have to do to continue the story. Nothing really specific, but you gotta have some build and complete a couple of ventures. And to be honest, it doesn't really bother me. It did bother me in previous Saints Row titles, but in this one, it really didn't. But if you do all of them, you will get a 100% ending. Before I talk about the story, let's talk about the map because that is a big part of every free roam game. And I gotta say, I'm very impressed with the map. I was very worried that this desert area was gonna be kind of ugly looking, but no, the map looked gorgeous and I really like how they did some of the areas on the map where it's very different from other parts of the map. Unlike Steel Part where everything looks very similar and it was very boring. So good job on them. But the one thing that's returning from Steelport is the boring NPCs. By all means, I'm already burned out of just me going around the city and causing chaos just for fun. But when people do it in their own spare time, it's very nice to see unique NPCs all over the map, not just very similar generic NPC that have an idle animation. It's very disappointing because a lot of those fans have been vocal about that idea and they couldn't really go through with it. All right. Let's talk about the story, because that's the one that everyone's been very vocal about. And I'm going to be honest with all y'all, the story does not really annoy me as much as everybody else is claiming it out to be. Yes, there is a lot of problems with the story, don't get me wrong, but I feel like a lot of things that we've been hearing about the story is kind of out of water. But some of those problems that a lot of people have are there, but we are starting out with a brand new cast of characters, especially with a brand new boss who used to work for the marshals just to pay off their college debt and their rent. And then we got Nina, who is my favorite character in this new cast of characters, who is part of the Panteros gang, who appreciates art and also really loves cars. And we got Eli, who is an entrepreneur type character and doesn't really care how the money got there as long as they got the money, but does not want to get involved in dangerous conflict. Then we got Kevin, who is party idols, who has a dream of becoming a famous chef. And then he has the funniest character trope ever that he doesn't wear a shirt. By all means, I don't think Kevin is as annoying as I thought he was going to be, but I still do not like the character one bit. So yeah, those tropes are very annoying and it's a big factor at the beginning of the story. But I will say this, I really did like how they decided to become a gang. The college debt stuff and the renting does not get acknowledged anymore. The only thing I really enjoyed is that they said that we are capable of handling these many gangs on us and we are able to take over this city. Why don't we make a gang? And I was very relieved on that. And even though I Kinda. did like the story, I like how the characters interact with each other, some more than others, and some of the dialogue was less cringy than others, but it was still entertaining. But there were a couple of problems with the story that I just couldn't vibe with. It's mostly just for the missions, but it still kind of bothers me. For example, there is a lot of missions that are very mandatory to the story. The one when you're LARPing with Eli is very interesting, but it's part of the main story even though it shouldn't be. And there are just some bad ones like the one with Kevin where you have to go from one freckle bitches to the other to get a toy. Yeah, don't know why that's part of the main story, but the boss treats it like it's very important. Just because they're friends and they have to do it. This is going to be kind of spoilers, so skip to this time code right here to skip the spoilers about some of the gang members. I really did like the Marshals. They're like the best gang in the game. Technically, they're not really a gang, but whatever. And I find them really interesting. And I find the story missions very fun. But the rest, I'm kind of disappointed on. The Panteros. I did like some of their story, but a lot of the Panteros missions or whatever are just them getting involved with another gang's mission and it's very annoying. Especially for the ending of the Panteros leader, Sergio, where you don't even kill him. And he dies very quickly and it's kind of annoying. And then for the idols, they don't even have a face or a leader or anything. They're just gangs and the collectors. And even then, the collectors do not make a big present for me to care about when I kill them or not. 
And one of the big reasons is that there's no cinematic of their deaths, but even then they have no phase and we don't really know who they are or their personality. It's just basically killing a stronger NPC and I don't feel anything when they die. And then we got the final boss of the game, the Nawaldi, a character that you meet at the beginning of the story, joins the saints and he betrays you towards the end. And his death feels very empty just because we never really saw a build up in his character. I knew he was going to betray us, but it just didn't feel like anything. He betrays you in the final mission of the game. And then the cutscene shows his death and it just felt like whatever. Remember when Tanya died, Julius died, Mero died, even when you choose Kilbane's death, it felt more impactful, but this one really didn't. And the mission structure is very annoying because even though I do enjoy some of the unique mission it offers, there's just a lot of mission of just saying, all right, stay in this area and defend. And by all means, this is an every Saints Row game, but... I do find this very annoying because it happens so often and so close to each other. It's just annoying. And the last thing I want to talk about is the bugs. This game bugs are very annoying and it's just because they stated before, months before, that the game was already gold and I'm still experiencing a lot of problems with the game. Moments where the car just flies up in the air at a random, having a hard time to even start the game. The camera gets super zoomed in for some reason out of nowhere. You die when you get out of the car and a lot more. And like I said, I wouldn't be mad about these things if Volition didn't say the game was gold. Even CD Projekt Red didn't say something dumb like, oh, the game was already gold. It's good now. Good. It was obviously not. But that is everything that I got to talk about in this game. So overall, I do have to say that I did enjoy the game and I do not regret my purchase whatsoever. But a 90% of reviewers claim that this is the worst experience they had for any video game, which I know they're exaggerating because there is no way. I even heard one reviewer claim that they need a palate cleanse. After hearing that, I was like, oh, these people are exaggerating by a long shot. But I don't know. A lot of people are really despising the game. So do I recommend this game? Honestly, I don't know. A lot of people really despise this game. Personally, what I will recommend doing is doing a few things. One, wait for the patches to come through and fix all the bugs because they're really bad. Two, get the Steam version of the game because I uninstalled it and reinstalled it and I lost all my save progress. Thank God I beat the game already, but still, that's pretty bad. Get the Steam version of the game and wait for it to go on sale so you could buy the season pass and wait for the online to come out and I believe that will be worth your money. Is this my least favorite Saints Row game? No. I still think God of Hell and Saints Row the Third are way worse in this game. The story was just okay. The gameplay was fun. I love the map. The NPCs are meh. And the side activities actually got me entertained. So, I'm personally going to give this game a 7 out of 10. But that will be it. I hope you guys really enjoyed this review. Tell me in the comments down below, how do you feel about this game? Did you love it? Did you despise it? I'll love to know and let's keep the conversation rolling. So, thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, become a member, join the Discord, and follow me on Twitter. I am out. Deuces.